here's one of my favorite adventure boots, the Grantstone brass boot on a lugged sole. I've had these for three years now. What do I think of them now? How are you going? Welcome back to Bootlosophy. My name is Tech, and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live on, the Wajit people of the Noongar lands. This is the brass boot from Grant Stone. Uh, I've had this pair three years, but honestly, with my big collection, uh, it's not had three years of wear, but I do tend to grab it when I go out for walks in our uh, national parks around here and national forests, or on our coastal seaside rocky tracks. Many will argue that it's not really a mock-toe work boot like the Red Wing 875 that you can see up there. And I tend to agree. But in this lugged sole option, it's a pretty rugged adventure boot. Let me first start by talking about the style. Uh, remind you about the brand, Grant Stone, and just touch on the construction. Then we'll go on to uh, how it has been worn by me and how it feels. You can see my initial review of this boot up here and compare it to what I think now. Before I go on though, uh, I've put the link to the website in the description area below, which is an affiliate link. So if you are intending to buy this, it would help me if you actually use that link. And it would also help me help my channel if you also remember to click on the like and subscribe buttons down below. So to the style and this option. This is a six inch high mock toe boot. In the idea of traditional mock toes like Thoroughgood's classic mock toe, see my review up there, and Red Wing's 875 work boot. The mock toe look is in the high side walls of the vamp uh, and this apron stitch, which is hand stitched to pucker up that vamp leather into a mock toe shape. The difference between this and the other traditional mock toe work boots is that the apron stitch is actually slightly inwards of the normal stitch that would be around the edge of the wall of the vamp. This gives it a side profile that has less of a straight up and down toe box and in fact curves over your toes. I, I quite like that look. The apron stitch doesn't stitch together the side walls and the apron piece on top. This is all just one piece of leather in the vamp. Uh, the apron stitch hand stitches the leather to gather that, that one piece of leather into a pucker, which, say what you will, takes some skill. Now the upper is made out of Charles F. Stead's waxy commander. Uh, Stead from England is of course probably the most famous tanner of suede. And this is a suede treated in oils and waxes and then given a light coat of wax on top, which cracks and wears off pretty much as soon as you look at the boots. In a lighter base color like their Snuff or Tobacco Waxy Commander, when the dark surface wax cracks, the lighter base show through, uh, banging patina straight into your eyes. This is a dark chocolate base so that uh, when the surface wax wears off, there's a much more subtle display of the suede nap showing through. It's kind of more quiet, if you will. Grandstone provides a white wedge sole option to the brass boot in different uppers leathers, as well as their own commando lugged uh, option, which these come in. In my opinion, their wedge sole models aim to look like a Thoroughgood or a Red Wing, especially in the RNG Battle Assey Saddle Tan, but I just don't think even then they really work boots in their construction and their leathers. So while these in the lugged soles are probably sturdy enough for some light work around the yard or workshop, I actually think they're perfect for a hiking adventure. Uh, especially because, as I'll go into in a minute, they are comfortable. Just to remind you, these are Goodyear welted, meaning that the sole is connected to the uppers using a thin strip of leather called a welt. The uppers and insole are stitched to the inside edge of the welt on the inside of the boot, uh, which goes all the way around the boot. Then the sole construction is stitched to the outside edge of the welt. This makes for water resistance as well as recraftability when the sole eventually wears out. The materials used by Grant Stone are mostly natural. They, they have a leather insole and a midsole. They use a leather heel counter. There's a cork filler between the midsole and the insole. Uh, and they also use a triple ribbed steel shank for arch support and stability. Their proprietary lugged sole is made of quite a firm rubber 
uh, so you feel it, but it is sturdy. Just reminding you of Grant Stone, it's an American company selling their boots only on their website, link below, uh, but they manufacture in China to access lower costs of production, uh, salaries, factory and premises costs and so on. This sells for US 360 at the time of filming, and what you get for that price in terms of materials and quality control, quite frankly, make this a premium boot at a competitive price. So how is it worn in these past three years? As I said, uh, with my big rotation, it hasn't had three years worth of wear that you might give it if you had four or five pairs of boots. I mean, at a guess, it's probably had an equivalent of two years steady, but not everyday wear. But what do I wear it for? Is in pretty regular weekend hikes in our national forest trails, and from time to time, some of the coastal uh, limestone, rocky and sandy tracks by the sea. This means that while most of the walking is on soft ground and rocks, it has had pretty rough conditions thrown at it. This is what I found. It's not a light boot. There's a lot of leather under and on your feet, including the lining, the uppers, insole, midsole. That means you actually feel the weight. But the advantage is that I've slipped and fallen down rocky cracks, and this has protected my feet. The grip is really solid and safe, and you feel what you're standing on and it's protected my ankle from turning plenty of times. I also find that I play around with using a pharmacy bought a removable squishy insole now and then. Sometimes my feet feel tired, so I use that insole for a little bit of squish. Sometimes I feel like I need the, um, it, it, it's now conformed, the leather insole under my feet. Sometimes I feel I do need the extra squish for comfort, truth be told, because it is heavy. I took these in my usual Grant Stone size of 8D, my usual half down from Brannock measurement. But I do find that because of the side walls, this is roomy, uh, so to be comfortable, I either have to use that insert or I wear thick socks. I would maybe consider these in 7.5D or oh, probably E actually, but if I did that, I would be worried about maybe my toes getting too close to the end of the toe box. The uppers have worn well. Uh, rest assured, this is not an effete, delicate suede. The tannage uh, shrinks the suede a bit so that the fibres are more scrunched together and therefore dense. The lining that's used uh, gives the whole boot uppers a little bit of sturdiness. The waxy commander is very water resistant, even after the surface wax wears off, uh, which it does quite quickly on this model. It soon becomes a slightly slick looking suede. I have rewaxed it myself once with a, a stick of otter wax and a heat gun. Uh, it never quite returns to the original look, but as you can see, it has waxy parts and nappy parts, which I like as a, as a dark chocolate patina. The outsoles have worn very well. I've already said that they grip well on sand and rocks and forest trails and mud. But they also seem durable on that sort of surface because while the corner of the heel has worn a bit, there you Overall, it still looks pretty good. Walking on concrete, you do feel more shock because it's actually quite a hard rubber. In terms of quality control, nothing has come apart or got loose uh, and nothing has chipped off. As I said, the outsole still looks good and the uppers are scuffed, but they're not scarred. All the stitching, both on the uppers and in, in the sole, they've all held up. Uh, the brass hardware is as solid as day one. The welt and the midsole edge has been kicked around and it shows a little bit of scuffing and wear, but it's solid. There's a reason this is my favourite outdoor adventure boot. One criticism, these leather laces kind of fur up very quickly and I can see that they will give way first. Oh, by the way, this kilty uh, isn't original. The original tongue is just suede. This kilty is from Dale's Leatherworks, uh, link also below. Not an affiliate, Dale's just my good friend. As I said, at time of recording, these are listed on Grant Stone's website at 360 US dollars. I bought them for US 298 in September of 2021, and I think, I'm, I'm not sure I remember right, I think I may have got them in a sale. Even today, at the mid 300s, it gives you a well built and sturdy boot, especially with this lugged sole option. And quite frankly, I think it compares well with others in the class. I think it's better built than Thorogood with much more natural materials. Uh, and to me, 
factory built for factory built, I think it's better made than the Red Wing 875. In my view, construction qualities like US made Truman, uh, like this one that I reviewed up here. In the longer term, it's shown its sturdiness, protectiveness and durability. Uh, so already it's only cost me less than $100 a year. The more I wear it, the less the annual cost. As for the wedge sole version, oh, I'm not so sure about that one. I have a Grant Stone proprietary wedge sole in their field boot, and I'm not a fan of that sole. So time to tell me what you think in the comments below. Don't forget if you like this video, click on like, and I have loads more boots to bring to you, new and long-term wear, so don't forget to subscribe. Until the next time, take care out there and see you again soon in the next one.